Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the 6th chapter of grade 9. The plate tectonic theory. In this chapter, we are going to learn the following topics. First, the theory of continental drift. Second, the theory of sea floor spreading, subduction, and finally, the theory of plate tectonics. This is the first session of the chapter Plate Tectonics Theory. This session is about the theory of continental drift. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Appreciate the significance of the theory of plate tectonic. Develop understanding about the postulates of the continental drift theories. Explain how these evidences support the idea of a single supercontinent. State the limitations of the continental drift theory. Before we begin our exploration, let us look at some of the common misconceptions regarding the theory of continental drift. Some people believe that the continents are at the current location ever since the earth was formed. Well, this is not true. Some people believe that concepts like volcanism, earthquakes, mountain building are not totally interrelated. Well again, this is a misconception. These concepts are very much connected to each other. Let's begin our journey. Plate tectonics is the unifying theory of geology. Earth is a dynamic planet. It has been changing ever since it was formed. The continents that we see today have formed fairly recently in the geology time. The surface of the earth was very different when it was formed and it has evolved through these 4.7 billion years. Plate tectonics is an important theory that explains earth's geography and the changes that it has gone through and the changes that it is going through at present. During this chapter, we will try to answer some of these basic questions. How is the earth surface always changing? Which forces act from within the earth and create such huge landforms? What is the theory of plate tectonics and how does it work? Which two theories help make us the theory of plate tectonics? What is continental drift and sea floor spreading? What happens when the plates crash together, pull apart and slide past against each other? Ever since humans started its efforts to unravel the mysteries of this planet, a number of theories were put forward by various groups like the church, Copernicus, Aristotle, Galileo, they all presented their understanding about what is happening on earth. Most of these theories contradict to each other and they also don't seem to be reliable. The way physics and the concepts of physics revolve around gravity, the concepts of chemistry revolve around atom 
the concepts of biology revolve around cell similarly the concepts of earth science revolve around plate tectonics plate tectonics is one single theory this theory explains a number of geological phenomena it explains why some places are prone to earthquakes and others are not why some regions have very deadly volcanic eruptions some have mild ones and some have no volcanic eruptions at all it explains why mountain ranges are located at certain places it explains why we have mid oceanic ridges deep sea trenches mineralization and many more this is just the beginning as we learn more about plate tectonics we'll understand how it is the most crucial theory in geology but before we understand the theory of plate tectonics we need to understand couple of other theories which formed the foundation for the theory of plate tectonics these theories are theory of continental drift and theory of sea floor spreading in this session we are going to focus on the theory of continental drift in the early part of 20th century a german explorer and scientist proposed a theory called the continental drift theory his name was alfred wegener he proposed that there was once a single supercontinent called pangea strange at present we have seven huge continents could these continents be together in the past well it is very difficult to believe it according to alfred wegener all the present seven continents were once joined together as a supercontinent called pangea and it was surrounded by a super ocean called penthalesa the idea of moving continents was proposed by alfred wegener which had to face strong opposition by people it was very obvious that it was difficult for people to believe such an idea however alfred wegener was very confident about his theory according to him around 200 million years ago this supercontinent started breaking apart and in the last 200 million years the continents have taken the present shape you can understand how this must have happened by looking at the diagrams as stated earlier alfred wegener proposed his hypothesis in 1915 he published the book called the origin of continents and ocean in his book he mentioned about a supercontinent called pangea which began breaking apart about 200 million years ago every theory has to be supported with evidences alfred wegener used the following evidences to support his theory the jigsaw puzzle of our continents the fossil evidences the matching rock types and mountain belts in different continents the paleoclimatic evidences let's look at each of alfred wegener's evidences evidence number 1 the jigsaw puzzle fit of continents if we observe closely the continents of south america and africa we may not fail to observe 
the similarity in the pattern of the western coast of Africa and the eastern coast of South America. They both appear to be fitting into each other very nicely. This was observed by many people and many people also began to think about the reason why it is so. But none of them could find a valid reason. Alfred Wegener was able to connect it in his theory of continental drift. Alfred Wegener was by profession a meteorologist. His work was to study the climate of various places. While studying the climate and its effect on rocks, Alfred Wegener discovered that the rock features present in South America are very similar to the rocks present in Africa. They are similar in age, composition and mineralization. This was the second evidence that he used. Furthermore, Alfred Wegener used the similarities between the mountain chains that are found in the eastern parts of North America, the western coast of Africa, the northwest coast of Africa to be specific, the northern mountains of Europe. He found that these mountain ranges are very similar in the rocks that they were composed of, their age, the ore deposits, which was very difficult if the continents were located where they are since the beginning. This was only possible if these continents were joined together. Fossils Wegener also found evidences from ancient fossils. He found fossils of the same species of extinct plants and animals in rocks of the same age, but on continents that are now widely separated. Wegener suggested that the continents could not have been in their current position because the organisms would not have been able to travel across the oceans. For example, Mesosaurus fossils are found in South America and South Africa, but the reptile only could swim in fresh water. Wegener also looked at evidences from paleoclimatic data. He used data from ancient glaciers. Large glaciers are most commonly found in frigid climate, usually in the far northern and southern latitudes. Using the distribution of grooves and rock deposits left by ancient glaciers on many different continents, Wegener traced the glaciers back to where they must have started. He discovered that if the continents were in their current position, the glaciers would not have formed in the middle of ocean very close to the equator. Wegener also found evidences for his hypothesis from warm climate zones. Wegener discovered ancient coal and coral reefs in parts of the continents that were much too cold today. The coral reef fossils and the coal had drifted to new locations since the coal and coral formed. Despite so many evidences, Wegener's theory of continental drift was rejected by people and the intellects for two reasons. First, his theory was not able to answer a critical question. The question was what could possibly force the continents to move across the ocean floor in this way? They would be crushed. 
Wegener's theory was not able to answer this question. And some people also advocated that he was a meteorologist, not a geologist, and it wasn't his work to propose a theory of geology. Well, this was all for this session. In the next session, we will try and learn the theory of sea floor spreading. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.